Hey, and welcome back to another 3D video in Blender. Today we're going to continue our space exploration series by modeling some cool minerals and crystals that your character can find and mine around the planet. If you're super new to the channel or new to Blender, then definitely go ahead and check out my last series on how to make models for a fantasy RPG for additional exercises. So if you want to follow along and make some cool models, then go ahead and open up new Blender session and we'll get started. So we'll be making three different types of resources for this video. We'll be making some cool crystals, some cubic minerals, and also some ores that you can use to make tools and weapons with. For all three of these, we're going to need a base that all these minerals and ores and crystals are going to sit in. And this is basically going to look like the minerals are coming out of the ground and pushing dirt away from it. We're going to do that by starting out with an icosphere. So go ahead and delete the default cube. And go ahead and add an icosphere. You can do that by going down to Add, Mesh, and Icosphere. Let's go ahead and bring that down to the, to the grid. And this will be very similar to how we created the rocks in the Fantasy RPG series. First, let's cut it in half. We only want the top half to be the mound that the crystals are coming out of. So let's go ahead into Edit Mode. Go ahead into Wireframe so that we can see all the different vertices. Let's go to Vertices Select. And we want to select all the vertices below the center line. So go ahead and click B for border select. Select all the bottom vertices. Hit delete on the keyboard. And we want to delete the vertices. And there we're left with the top half. So if we go ahead and look at the, the bottom of this mound here, we can see that we have an opening. We can go ahead and close that off by selecting this loop of vertices and filling that in with a face. So let's go ahead and hold down Alt. Select one vertex. And it selects the whole loop and then hit F on the keyboard to close that off. So now it's really only a matter of moving some of these vertices around to make it look a little bit more natural, organic, and a little bit more random. So you can do that just by selecting the vertices and moving around the origin arrows. Okay, and like with anything in Blender, this could be as detailed or simple as you want. So with this done, let's go ahead and rename it Mound. And we can actually reuse this for all the different minerals if we really want to. Or we could duplicate it and then change some things around just to make it look different. So next we're going to go ahead and add our crystals. And this is going to be really simple. We're just going to go ahead and add cubes. We're going to elongate those to be a little bit longer and taller. And then we're going to draw an X on the top surface of it and move that vertice away from it to give it a nice square point. So first, let's go ahead down to Add, Mesh, and we're going to add a cube. Let's go ahead and shrink that down a little bit. Let's rename this Crystal. So from here, let's go ahead into Edit Mode, and we're going to select the top face and pull it up the Z-axis. So that's the blue arrow right here. We can just pull that up. And now what I like to do is use the knife tool to draw an X on the top. There's many ways that you could do this just to get some uh, diagonal edges on the top face here, but this is the way that I like to do it. So go ahead to the knife tool over on the side here, and what we want to do is just select the opposite corners, hit enter, and we're going to do that again with the other corners. Okay, so now when we go down to vertex select, we can select the center vertex that we just created here and pull that away from the top face. And there we have an extremely basic crystal. And we can actually use the vertex select to move the vertices away and kind of give it a little bit of a tapered look as well. So let's go ahead and do that. It's actually worth noting that you don't have to start out with a cube for this. You can actually use a cylinder with a very low poly count to give it a hexagon or octagon and use that same method by joining all of the opposite uh, vertices together to make that center point on top and then pull it away to give it a point like we just did. So you can actually end up with a lot of different cool crystal shapes. So now let's go ahead duplicate this main crystal and then change them up a little bit so it looks like a nice group of unique crystals. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and give the mound and the crystal some color. The planet that we made was purple in the last video, so we're gonna make the mound purple to match. So it looks like it's coming out of the planet that we created. So as a refresher, a simple way to edit the color is go over to the object, select it in the workspace, go to the material editor, hit new, 
you want to rename the material to the object that you're coloring. So we're going to call this mound. That just keeps the different colors straight in case we want to color something else that same color. And we go down to diffuse, click on the white bar, and we're going to make it about this color, maybe a little bit darker. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and move on to the mineral. So first what I wanna do is just grab the mound, duplicate that and move it over for us to use it for the mineral. We'll put it right over here. So the minerals are gonna be even easier than the crystals that we just created. The look that we're going for is a bunch of rectangular prisms that are arranged in a way that they're grouped together, but their faces and edges are mostly parallel. There are actually a lot of metals and minerals that appear like this in nature and give a really awesome look. So we're gonna go ahead and try to emulate that for our planet. So first, like I said, let's just go down to add mesh. We're gonna add a cube. Let's go ahead and shrink that down. We're gonna move it into place. Let's go ahead and scale it in the Z direction. So to achieve the look that we're going for, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this and kind of cluster them together so that they overlay, some of the corners stick out, but make sure that they all run parallel together. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I could probably fidget with this for hours, but I think this is good enough for right now. I actually split this up into two separate clusters just to give it a little bit of variance, and I think that definitely looks better if it's just one, so go ahead and do that if you want to as well. So let's go ahead and give this some color. I think I'm gonna make this a light green color. Okay, so we have two resources done so far, so all that's left to do is create our metal ore resource. So to do that, go ahead and copy over the mound that you created. Okay, so with that duplicated, what we're gonna actually do is duplicate it again and then stretch it in the Z direction so it kind of looks like a rock. And that's so we can create a deposit of ore that's more in a rock instead of just laying or sticking out of the ground. So with the mound selected, go ahead and click Control D to duplicate. Click to leave it in the same position. We're gonna hit S and then Z, and that way we can just stretch it in the Z direction. And then we're going to go ahead and scale the whole thing and make it so that it fits right on top of the mound. So hit S on the keyboard. We're going to shrink it a little bit. We're going to move it up. And just go ahead and keep scaling it until it's the way that you like it. You could even go ahead into edit mode and edit a little bit more too. With that selected, we're going to go ahead over into our outliner here. And I'm just going to rename this ore rock just to keep it separate. Okay. And right off the bat, let's go ahead and change the color to gray. And now what we want to do is make it look like there are smaller rocks sticking out of this rocks or that are kind of lodged or deposited in this main rock. And one really easy way to do that is to just manipulate the rock that we created. You can import more cubes and icospheres and change those vertices and edges around, but I like to keep it really simple and I'm just gonna duplicate and then manipulate what we already have. So now finally, let's go ahead and add some color to the ore that we just made. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it kind of an orange color. All right, now we have our three different resources that we created that we can add to our games and place in the worlds that we make. So definitely try this one out and make sure to tweet me a picture of your final design. I would love to see all the cool materials and resources that you come up with for your planet. If there's something you would love to see created in a video, please leave it down in the comments below and I would love to give it a try. If this video truly helped you out, please like and subscribe to the channel. I forgot the question of the week last week, so I'm going to ask it here. What is your favorite space exploration game? And that goes for any sci-fi or space related game. I would love to see what it is, so go ahead and leave it in a comment. All right, keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.